This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. My name is Glenn Martinez of Olamana Gardens over in Waimanalo, where we specialize in doing an aquaponics. But today we have a special program for you. I just came back from Florida where I was, attended a 50th high school reunion was the reason for the trip, but I also went to a ham fest there. And a ham fest, of course, resulted in a few new radios being added to the collection. But one of the things I really picked up on last weekend at the, uh, in Florida was that the sense of urgency with all the hurricanes. We just went through Houston, then we went through the Key West, Miami, the whole state of Florida got whacked. And now we have ham operators being sent over to San Juan, Puerto Rico. And the sense of urgency with that, the Virgin Islands and what we saw there uh, that happened, uh, the call for ham operators to come out and to help back up has really been stressed. And so this weekend, coming up this Saturday, we have a special event here in Hawaii. And I have a guest, a very special guest, uh, Clem Jung, and uh, otherwise known as KH6. H-O? H-7-H-O. H-H-7-H-O. And uh, he is the Pacific Aries Section Emergency Coordinator. So welcome aboard, sir. And I thank, thank you, you for inviting me here. Yeah. And so maybe I want to explain to the audience out there what Aries is. It's an yeah. amateur radio emergency service. It's sponsored yeah. by the American uh, Radio Relay League mm -hmm. uh, for emergency communications. Right. And I'm the Pacific Section Emergency Coordinator. Mm -hmm. So I work with all the amateur radios or mm -hmm. hams state of Hawaii and the Pacific right. and, uh, and Guam right. and uh, Northern Marianas. Right. Wonderful. And by the way, as, uh, as Natalie Cash and I were coming on our way down here, driving down, we listened to the public radio and it was about storms and about FEMA. And they had the director of FEMA on. He's running 22 disasters right now. The ones I mentioned, Houston, Florida, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and, you know, and, uh, and the wildfires that are going on in California. And also, it was mentioned, is the call for the ham operators, and uh, which leads us to the expression, uh, ham radios save lives, you know? And, uh, and where this comes down to, the uh, ham radio people are being called in for, to help with the messaging. The cell phone towers are gone, as you see in the pictures of all the fires in Puerto Rico and California. There's nothing, there is no infrastructure. And uh, the expression is, when, when there's nothing else, you know, when nothing else works, the ham radio guys are there. And so this coming Saturday is a real practice for that, right? Yes, it's the annual American Radio Relay League, uh, AARL, um, what we call the Simulated Emergency Test. It's annually done in October, normally the first uh, Saturday mm -hmm. in October, but here in Hawaii we're doing it on the third Saturday of uh, October, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a two-part mm -hmm. uh, exercise, the first part starts at one, 8 o'clock to 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Mm -hmm. And that's when we'll be practicing uh, passing uh, a voice and a digital message, FL Digi, through uh, either VHF, UHF, or HF. And also there'll be some selected sending digital messages through Windlink RMS Express, right. where there was Telnet, which is uh, internet, uh, like sending an email through internet, or he's sending it through Winmore or two meter packet or HF Pactor. Right. And so um, the part two is going to be from one o'clock to about one o'clock p.m. Sunday, where we'll be sending using Winlink RMS Express to, to practice sending messages to our um, contact on in California or Oregon and using HF. And what basically what they're trying to do in Puerto Rico, sending messages to uh, forward messages from people in the impact, so-called impacted area, said we're okay or we're, where we are. Said, and they're calling those health and wellness messages, right? Right, health and mal wellness messages to the American mm -hmm. Red Cross. Right. So we're using WinLink to uh, practice part two of the exercise. Mm -hmm. So now, when, you, when you say WinLink, yes. I, I think one of the analogies I use is to say it's like sending a fax. You know, but a fax, you need to have infrastructure. You need to have a telephone system or an internet to go. But with this, you use an HF radio or a VHF radio. Essentially, same Email. thing. You're same emailing, emailing, like the yeah. emailing. Yeah. And uh, some people ask me, well, what's, so, what's the big thing? And it becomes real obvious. If you have a list of 30 names and you know, that you want to put out there, 
it's a lot better to do it in writing than it is to try to spell that over the radio, right? Yes, it's sending out digitally. It's uh, somehow a little bit uh, mm -hmm. uh, private, mm -hmm. um, and you can send it faster mm -hmm. digitally uh, versus sending it verbally, and you have to write every single item word for word, and it takes a real a lot of time. Right. So uh, amateur radio for MCOM is moving more toward, or emergency communication is moving more toward digital mm -hmm. communication. Yes, voice is still mm -hmm. there because voice is the bottom where if you have no computers, um, no keyboard, no keyboard nothing whatever, else. you can still right. send messages through voice, which will mm -hmm. take longer. But the preferred method is digital, which is faster, and you have a file of it, mm -hmm. and you can print it out as well. Right. So it's more accurate and quicker and faster, mm -hmm. generally overall. Yeah. Now, I attended a workshop um, over in, uh, on the Poly Highway a couple of months ago where you were teaching FL Digi yes. and how to use it with the simplest of radios and where you would hold it up, literally you would tape record it and then play it into the microphone, and it would <laughs> make scratchy noises. It would come out the other side, it would come out written for the other person. Yeah, it's uh, using acoustical coupling, FL Digi, using mm -hmm. uh, um, a digital mode MT63-1KL, mm -hmm. which is a speed 1000L, uh, is uh, uh, another way of sending digital messages, mm -hmm. uh, like an ICS, Incident Command System, uh, uh, I213, uh, mm -hmm. which is a message form, and we can send that through HF, we can send it by VHF, UHF, by mm -hmm. crystal coupling without any other gear. That's mm -hmm. a bottom line, simple, easy to use. Right. Um, so that's one mode. Yeah. Now uh, this is not just ham operator, ham operator. You got uh, the Department of Emergency Management, FEMA, all your organizations have agreed on the format to use, right? Like doing that, those forms, those ISO Well, forms, we right? use the I, uh, ICS 213. That's a form that uh, FEMA and uh, first responder uh, mm -hmm. emergency management uses. It's uh, a form that if you want to be NIMS compliant, National Incident Management System, which mm -hmm. the amateur radio who's involved in MCOM are, you want to use the ICS form. Right. And to send uh, messages as uh, from a survey agency, like maybe American Red Cross, mm -hmm. to uh, Department of Emergency Management, mm -hmm. City County Honolulu, a Wahoo mm -hmm. EOC yeah. when there's no cell phone, no internet, mm -hmm. no landline phone, no electricity, everything right. fail, amateur radio student right. can pass the message right. forward. Now when I was in Florida and I talked to some of the volunteers that had gone to San Juan, Puerto Rico or gone down to Key West or some of them just down to Miami, which not wasn't that hard hit, but all those people that were going to those shelters and we were getting calls asking if people were there. And one of the things I was very surprised at, it's one-way traffic. Like you cannot call down to San Juan, Puerto Rico and say, I'm looking for my mom, I'm looking for my grandparents. But on the other hand, if the grandparents are in a shelter, they can go up to the ham operator and say, I need to tell my son or my daughter I'm okay, yes. you know, and et cetera. So the messages are all outgoing in that situation. Right. Uh, yeah. Normally in the first 72 hours, is all emergency traffic uh, uh, not health and welfare, but emergency it's traffic. To life saving. Life saving. Right. And then normally after 72 hours, then we go to uh, health and welfare. Mm -hmm. And normally we send messages outbound, not inbound. It's easier right. to send messages outbound saying, I'm safe. They can send it to American Red Cross through the mm -hmm. health and uh, safety. Um, and that's what they're doing for mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. So people that want to track their loved mm -hmm. ones, their family or friends in Puerto right. Rico to go to the Red Cross health and uh, safety uh, safe uh, website and you can look up for the names and there will be right. messages there. And that's what the amateur radio operators are doing. And so part two of our exercise for the simulated emergency test here in Hawaii on October 21st, this coming Saturday, is to simulate that. So that people from the mainland may have tourist members mm -hmm. here, visitors, right. family, and also family mm -hmm. members living in Hawaii <clears throat> can find out if uh, once we get the message outgoing, mm -hmm that they can find out. So it's easier to send out a message outgoing on amateur radio than to send them a health and welfare, I'm looking for my family member at blah, 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 whatever. Right. It's harder to find, there's no manpower mm -hmm. or resource to look for the people. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other way around, outbounding is the best way to do it. Right. And by the way, uh, when I was in Florida and I went to the ham fest, I got me a new hat, see? Terrific. This way, yeah, so now I know who I am when I look in the mirror. And on it, 
one of the things I like to say is when all else fails, amateur radio, you know, when, when it's all down. But the other pins, these are not fishing lures. They might look like that, but one is Aries, you yes. know, and here it's EARC, Emergency Amateur Radio, uh, you know, club that we belong to, uh, which is active. You have the Skywarn Spotter, which I took a class that you recommended. Natalie and I both became certified Skywarn Spotters uh, doing that. And the other one is the Racies, which is downtown at the City Hall building. And can you tell us what Racies are? Racies is uh, sponsored by FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency. Mm -hmm. It's a Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service. And what it is, the survey agency is an emergency management agency where the Department of Emergency Management, City County Honolulu, or with the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, formerly known as State Sioux Defense. I belong to both. I'm uh, State Racies with mm -hmm. Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. I'm also uh, DEM Racies with the Department of Emergency Management, City County of Honolulu. I'm also the State Sky One Ham Coordinator, so you have mm -hmm. a Sky One pin there. Yeah. Yeah, and so I work very closely with the Sky One staff that I have, all volunteers mm -hmm. that help to activate the Sky One amateur VHF, UHF, and HF net when the National Weather Service say, Clem, we need to activate the Sky One net because we have a tropical cyclone activity. We need mm -hmm. to know more what's happening out in the field. Right. Ground truth from right. the amateur radio right. operators out there. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, when we say HF and VHF and UHF, they, they, don't, they don't understand what we're talking about. And I right. think one of the ways to think about it is VHF is pretty much line of sight. From if you, site. you know, it's normally 20, 25 miles. If you can see them, you can talk very to them. Very high frequency. VHF. Very high frequency. Yeah. Then UHF is ultra, ultra high, frequency. high frequency. Great for downtown area, bouncing around buildings and very congested areas, oh, and right? buildings as well, yeah. How about the HF? When does the HF come on board? HF is for more long distance, middle, middle, middle distance to long distance. Like and from San Juan, Puerto Rico to, to Florida. To Florida, to the mainland. Right. And uh, for and also for DXing, what we call for uh, talking to other countries. That's mm -hmm. ha amateur radio is a hobby which encompasses a wide area. Emergency mm -hmm. communication is one of mm -hmm. them. The other one is DXing, uh, where people want to talk uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. And there's contesting. There's also satellite uh, talking with the uh, satellite. Uh, there's Earth uh, to Moon to Earth bounce. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, uh, let's digital pause right there. Earth yeah. to Moon bounce. Yeah. So let's say, so if I can see the moon and I shoot my radio up and hit the moon, who can I talk to? To somebody that uh, on the other end that m might be doing the same thing. Anybody else that can see yeah. the moon, right? Yeah. So I read just uh, about a week ago that a uh, long distance record had been set, something like 12,800 miles. Somebody in uh, in Australia talked to somebody else that could see the moon, you know, the, and the, the mountains the moon, from yeah. one half of the earth to the other half of the earth, bouncing off the moon. It's kind of like playing pool, a ricochet shot. Yeah, yeah. you need a lot of power yeah. and uh, right. a, lot of, a lot of antennas. Yeah. 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 Now, I mentioned this, we were going to do this this Saturday, and the person I was talking to said, so you all get together and do this once a year. I thought, no, this is like the grand finale. This is like the total enactment, and everybody gets involved, right? Because, well, it's one of several uh, yeah. uh, um, exercises, yeah. COMEX, communication uh -huh. exercise that we get involved mm -hmm. with. We normally use the set as for tsunami. Right. And so this year we're going with the Great Aleutian Tsunami, mm -hmm. which is a 9.2, that's a scenario, 9.2. This is like the 100 moment. year, uh, worse as it gets, a thousand year, years. 10,000 year this event. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. And uh, will cause destructive uh, from an earthquake from mm -hmm. the Aleutian and will cause uh, a lot of flooding and destruction in the state of Hawaii. Right. And if you look at your great, uh, uh, greatest tsunami evacuation map mm -hmm. in the yellow pages of the telephone book or go to the state or the Department of Emergency Management website to show right. where the evacuation area. Mm -hmm. So it will go further inland mm -hmm. and impact, uh, I think the number was about 300,000 people on Oahu alone, right. along the coastal community. Right. All Waikiki we wiped out. Where I live in Channel Lake, Kailua, for example, Kailua will be wiped out. In Channel Lake, right. 80 percent, or I would say 70 percent on Channel Lake will okay. be wiped out. Yeah. Lanikai will be wiped out. The Marine Base will be wiped out. So, and all of Kailua Town will be wiped out. Right. North Shore, Haleiwa, mm. Wailua, um, downtown Honolulu will be wiped out with a great Aleutian tsunami. Well, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. We're going to take a short little break here, and we'll be right back with you. Stay tuned to us, okay? Thank you. 
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here, the Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, I'm going to be right here. Stop by and hear from some of the best investment minds across the globe. And real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds managers, all that great stuff. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark, and every Monday at 1 o'clock, I present ThinkTech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, where we bring together researchers from across the campus to describe a whole series of scientifically interesting topics of interest both to Hawaii and around the world. So hopefully you can join me 1 o'clock Monday afternoon for ThinkTech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. Aloha, Glenn Martinez here of Olamata Gardens over in Waimanalo and with my special guest, Clem Jung, uh, KH7HO, and, uh, and he's here talking to us. He's the Pacific Area Section Emergency Coordinator, and uh, he's going to be running, a, uh, we're doing a big exercise on Saturday. It's statewide, and w what all agencies are going to be involved in this? Well, um, the Department of Emergency Management will open up their emergency operating center mm -hmm. for this exercise. Uh, just for amateur radio mm -hmm. communications. So is the state uh, emergency operating center in Diamond Head. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a, a communication mm -hmm. center, and we'll be using that. Uh, we'll be simulating Kauai uh, and Maui emergency operating centers. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Island, we're not quite sure. They'll be running their own exercise as well, but mm -hmm. uh, whether it be tied in with the state EOC, uh, we're not sure at this time. Mm -hmm. But it's statewide exercise, and like I said, the scenario is a tsunami. Mm -hmm. uh, great Aleutian tsunami. Which brings up the point, we just did one a couple of months ago, in June I believe it was, right. where there's... In any sense, this is like doing a fire drill. Right. Right? And that... We need and, to practice the way right. we fight. Yeah. And now we see California's dealing with about five or 6,000 homes and businesses lost. Major problem, right? right. Disaster. And you're talking about 300,000 people being involved, right? If we hit by a tsunami. Great Aleutian right. tsunami, yes. Great Aleutian tsunami. So that would be it. Now, when that happens, you be will you all be going simplex because oh, you're, you're assuming all the uh, repeaters will be down. Well, in this exercise, we're using simplex radio to radio communication mm -hmm. on VHF on the on the out in the field, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we have what you call hub uh, centers run mm -hmm. by Aries District Emergency Coordinators. There's three of them on Oahu, as an example. Mm -hmm. And they, in turn, receive the damage uh, situation reports, damage reports, any requests for assistance. Mm -hmm. And they, they, in turn, will forward that information to the county EOC. In this case, mm -hmm. Oahu EOC is a tactical call sign for yeah. the Department of Emergency Management. And Emergency Management, uh, City County Honolulu, will mm -hmm. forward any requests for yeah. assistance summary of damages right. and a sit rep to the state EOC. Mm -hmm. So all disasters are local at the county level and any mm -hmm. request for assistance will go from the county up to the state and real world to the state to FEMA uh, mm -hmm. at that level. Excuse me. <coughs> so, so we're all practicing this, at all the this local meets level. FEMA yeah. standards in. Well, for yeah. the, what we're trying to do is, uh, especially no. on the ICS 213, right. and we'll be sending mm -hmm. that by voice but mm -hmm. preferably method is FL Digi and mm -hmm. also can do it through yeah. WinLink. Right. And I've been participating in the weekly exercises on the FL Digi. You've been doing special nets with the uh, uh, DMR. Um, and then every Sunday we have, who's the gentleman that does Sunday evenings? Yeah, that's Kevin Bogan, uh, AH6QO. Yeah. He yeah. runs the uh, month, uh, the Sunday uh, weekly 7 p.m. net, the Pacific Section Aries net. And he talks about uh, emergency communication, what to do, right. what not to do. How to conduct yourself on the radio. Right. Radio procedures, yeah. It's not a chat time, is it? No, it's not a yeah. social chat chat. Right, right. No CB yeah. radios, yeah. We don't yeah. use CB radios. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's all strictly business. But I, yeah. I enjoyed it because um, each week he seems to do a different theme. One week it's weather and weather spotting and the reports you would use associated with that. Also, he, he stresses that when you're talking, to keep it right to the point. You know, in other words, quickly say what you got to say, pass it on, free up the airwaves. Yeah. Right? Emergency communication AMCOM is we mm -hmm. need to get the critical mm -hmm. um, elements of mm -hmm. essential information out as mm -hmm. soon as possible with less words. It's right. like writing a telegram with the essential words there in you there. Go. And every word can cost a dollar. So you keep it short and simple to the point yeah. and you send it out. We want to keep the frequencies and the repeaters if they're still operating 
clear for emergency traffic. Because so only that you don't one person you. gets to talk at a time. At a time, right? yes. Yeah, so that's there why you I go. keep it short and simple. Right. And one of the big advantages, of course, is if one person's talking, like giving out information, many, many thousands can hear it yes. all at the same time. Yes. So you could, so like in California, you could broadcast out to evacuate orders, et cetera. You know, or they can go out and tell the emergency wor workers the fire just came or crested the hill, change of plans. Where yeah, to we go. don't really so, broadcast, right, but right. we make the announcement. Make so an that, announcement, yeah, right. So that amateur radio hears the word, they can pass it on to their survey and say right. we need to right. evacuate, as an example, right. evacuate now, whatever yeah. the, uh, right. the message is passed right. on. Well, we got a little show and tell here today. Um, one, I went to the show down in California. I got a new plaque here. You can mount these on your truck, on your car, on your house, or wherever. And that's my call sign, Alpha Hotel 6, Victor Foxtrot. Um, on it, and uh, then this is a DMR radio. Digital mobile radio. Yeah. It's a commercial radio by Motorola, mm -hmm. and it's been uh, set to function in the amateur radio U UHF band, ultra-high frequency band. Right, and you and several other people here have sponsored uh, privately um, repeater stations, right? We have, by invitation only, right? We have put up uh, our own funds to set mm -hmm. up uh, digital mobile radio repeaters mm -hmm. throughout the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we're involved in MCOM and working with survey agencies like the High, Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, Department of Emergency Management, mm -hmm. City County Honolulu, Sky One, uh, Healthcom, mm -hmm. um, we're all involved with MCOM, Emergency Communication, mm -hmm. that we're very serious about this, that right. if you're interested and you belong to one of the survey agencies, you need to be sponsored. The reason for the sponsorship is so that you are to uh, guided the right way to use the system, help you if you have any problems, and we talk among ourselves as uh, MCOM Again, people. it's not a yeah. chat station. It's not a it's, chat. It's a, it's a good business. practice, yeah. all business yeah. you know, kind of thing. But remarkably clear. Yes, it's we all digital, very clear. Very, very clear. And, it's, and instead of dialing in frequencies, you have preset channels that you've programmed into the radio, right? We have zones and channels, yeah. Right. So like I notice on when you program my DMR radio, I can go to Oahu and be Oahu only, or you can go to the whole state Statewide. of Hawaii, yeah, et cetera. Right. So when you do it, you, you're choosing the uh, how large of a group you want to talk to. Right. Right. And if we're over in Kailua and it's just a Kailua incident, we don't need to share it with everybody else. We would just do the Kailua group. We can do a, a talk group that only mm -hmm. the Kailua people can talk. So. Right. The good thing about digital mobile radio is very efficient, it's narrow band, mm -hmm. and we can talk with the same frequency mm -hmm. to different channels. Right. So very efficient versus analog, which right. is more wide band and not as efficient mm -hmm. as uh, digital. Right. Now this little radio depends on having repeaters, antennas, uh, up to be able to do it. But the beautiful thing is only five watt, and, but if it hits the antenna, then you can talk to other people. If we jump over here, this is an HF radio here, and this one I picked up at the uh, trade show, I used one, I got real lucky in Melbourne, and that is a uh, uh, Yesu 857D digital. And what it does, you can talk to the world, from here to California, on to HF. Asia, on HF. Because it goes up, it hits the ionosphere, and it bounces down all around. And so you're a totally different thing. And something that came of big interest in my trip to uh, Florida, I had in my little high school reunion, I got one day off to uh, go to this ham fest, and boy, are they stressing this. This little box does something very, very special. Battery booster. It, what it does, it's a battery booster. Turns out all of these radios expect if you use them in a car, that the car will be running. Then you get 13.8 volts out of your car, your alternator going. But when you turn the car off, you start running your battery down, right? So one of the things you have to do on this radio here, if the voltage gets below 11 and 3 quarter volts, it turns off yes. to save its life because low voltage would kill it. And this little jewel here, it can go all the way down to 9 volts and boost it back up to 13. the 13.8 volts. Yes. So there's, we have go kits, and I was going to show you that I have my go kit. This is my Coast Guard go kit. And uh, with this on it, this is a sling. I can throw it over my shoulder. All of this fits in there, including a little battery. And the go kit is something you keep by your door. And what you want to do there is grab it and run. And you think grab it and run? Think about all those people that fire. That was something else. Those people only had minutes. They were waking up people at 1 o'clock in the morning and saying, you have to leave now. 
Look at the YouTubes, all the in the news, all the abandoned cars and everything else. The family just jumped out, got in a car, and go. So you have a bag hanging by the front door. I imagine you've got a go bag or a go case probably in your house. Have several, several ready to go, right? And you have some with um, uh, the office emergency management, right? They have special black cases that the city and county provides for oh, certain yeah. people. City and county has. Uh, Mm -hmm. 10 uh, UHF repeaters. Mm -hmm. I have one uh, assigned to me. Mm -hmm. uh, we use that as another means for communication. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Hi okay. Hawaii Emergency Management has two HF go kits mm -hmm. for HF um, that can be utilized as well. Wonderful. So. And in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, I'm a TCO, which is a technician uh, coordinating person and authorized to use the Coast Guard radios. And one of our missions is we made similar packages up like City and County did. We have Pelican cases, and in it is an HF radio, a VHF radio, and a land, and a VHF marine radio. Mm -hmm. And so we can do all the way around. And in it is a power supply, a battery, everything is in one case. Antenna. And we go. The antenna, yeah. the whole thing. I was going to show you how cute the little antenna is going to be. A little mag mount antenna. And what I do is I set up a camera tripod and a pizza pan. Slap this on top, or obviously away. on top of a yeah. car, right? and bingo, I can get out. So they have different antennas for different radios, but it's a wonderful hobby. I'm joining the hobby, but from my Coast Guard auxiliary experience, I liked it, the usefulness of what you're training. You're not just piddling around, you have a couple of guys in a dark room talking to a screen. It actually has purpose, and as they say, ham radio can save lives. So we'd like to thank you all very much for this, for joining in with us. We try to keep it interesting. And I'm really grateful for you coming down and joining us here. Thank you on, for the invi invitation. Think Tank Hawaii. And uh, we're live now, but this will be posted up on the YouTube. So people, if you, if you want to tell your friends that they should have caught it, if you're watching now, we appreciate it. Tell them, go to Think Tank Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii and uh, tell them to look it up. And I think they'll find it interesting. By the way, tonight we have a meeting at 7 o'clock. And that's over at the, by Pearl Harbor. It's off base. And uh, everybody's public's invited. If you're interested in meeting some ham guys, be there at 7 o'clock. Where's it at, Clem? It's the uh, Fleet Reserve Center across from the um, uh, Honolulu Fire Department Training uh, Center yeah. on Volkenberg Place. Yeah. Uh, it's the Emergency Amateur Radio Club. Yep. It's a potluck. Bring something down. Come down and join us. Meet some ham operators and learn how you can be part of emergency training. Well, we thank you all so much for turning in and, uh, and learning with you and hope you got something out of this. Glenn Martinez, Olamana Gardens, and Clem Jung, thank you very much.